Ow, it's cracking mother truckers. Yellow outlaw here. We are in Kentucky. Right now we're at Churchill Downs checking out this Kentucky Derby crap, but we're not here for horses. We're here for doctors and science. That's right, today we are interviewing a guy I've been wanting to interview for a long time. It's Dr. Radu himself. He is a, uh, well, let's just say he's a really smart guy, so we're gonna learn some stuff today. Let's just get right into it. We'll see you in there. Yeah. What's cracking, mother truckers? Outlaw back here. You guys probably are a little weirded out right now because I am with a doctor. Guys, I uh, I got some medical issues. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> We're here with Dr. Radu today, who I've been wanting to make a video with forever. I've been talking about it on the videos, and you guys have been um, have been wanting to, to see him on as well. He actually did a video with... Uh, my friend Darcy Compton, you guys know him as Mudjug One on YouTube, probably five years ago or something like that. And uh, but I wanted to bring you on for one reason, and that was just to have a long form conversation. I didn't want to just do a video and cut it all up. I kind of wanted to have no cuts, just kind of you know uh, have a good conversation about tobacco industry today, tobacco products, and, and everything that you deal with. So can you go ahead and give them kind of an introduction on who you are and what you've been working with? Well, I've been doing research on tobacco products for about 24 years now. I started out as an oral pathologist, wow. which is fancy, basically. We're all about diseases of the mouth that don't involve cavities and gum disease. Gotcha. And so I consider myself an expert with mouth cancer. And it turns out I was teaching my students, and I had been taught that smokeless tobacco was a death sentence for mouth cancer. Right. So after 15 years or so, I'm starting to think, you know what? I'm not seeing chewers and dippers down in Birmingham, Alabama, where I was in practice at University of Alabama at Birmingham. Right. I'm not seeing chewers and dippers come in with mouth cancer. Mm. So I started to question how I'd been taught that and why I was teaching that. And it turns out that I had it all wrong. In fact, we had been, the Americans have been totally misinformed about chewing and dipping and mouth cancer. Right. It turns out the risks are low to non-existent right. for chewers and dippers. And you wrote a book called... And I wrote a book mm -hmm. in 94 called How Smokeless Tobacco Can Save Your Life for Smokers Only. Right. That is, if you're a smoker and you're inhaling all those carcinogens, you need to consider switching to a vastly safer product right. called smokeless tobacco. That's dip and chew. Right. And now, smokeless tobacco back in the day, like when in the 90s, early 2000s, it was, it was, they were allowed to advertise. It was, it was, it would, it was advertised as a safer alternative. Was it ever? No. But no. I remember it was advertised. It was advertised on NASCAR, bull riding, stuff yeah. like that. But it, it was allowed to be advertised. But now all that's gone. Yes. And now it's treated just as bad as cigarettes, pretty much. Exactly. The 1998 Master Settlement got rid of all advertisements. Okay. Now, they never were allowed to advertise that they were safer than smoking. Okay. In fact, the FDA warning on every fourth tobacco product, and chewer and chewers and dippers know this, mm -hmm. is that this product is not a safe alternative. Right. That's nonsense. Right. But that's what the FDA and federal government have told them they have to put on those products. So that warning labels came in what, 2010? 2011? Oh, no, like warning that. labels came in 1986. Or no, excuse me, on the dip, on the dip cans. Yeah. On so, the dip cans, they've so, been on. They've been on those products forever. Were they? Were they on the? On the? They were smaller back then. They were smaller. Oh, they were smaller. Yeah. When the FDA came in, they said you've got to up the size. Right. Now you got to make it almost all of the can. Yeah, exactly. But but yeah, they've so always be been there. That's crazy. So, I guess speaking of warning labels, right now, here's a thing that I had a problem with, and that I can't couldn't even believe when I did the video. But I did a video. Uh, I can't even remember what it was. I think it was on the article that we're going to talk about that the American Cancer Society came out. And I bought a pack of cigarettes to kind of 
sh like show the differences and, and, and just kind of hold it up and, and show the dip and stuff like that. But when I bought the pack, I think it was a Marlboro Red pack, it had like no warning label on it. It had a tiny Surgeon General warning on the side. Mm -hmm. yep. And it wasn't 30% of the packaging whatsoever. Yep. And I saw it on, and then I went back and I was like, I saw it, there was no, like when you're looking at the, the, the cigarettes at a gas station or something, you don't see the warning label like you do on Smokes Tobacco. And obviously everybody knows that the number one uh, amount of cancer in, in the country is cigarettes and you don't even see it on, this, on the cigarette packaging. The FDA knew the smokeless tobacco warnings were wrong and inaccurate. Right. So what they do? They made them bigger. <laughs> I mean, it's just insanity what people are doing to smokeless tobacco. I don't understand why there's, if, if it has to be over 30% of whatever it is of the, of the actual tobacco can, why they're not on cigarettes like 30%. Because the only one that I saw was the little one on the, on the actual, it wasn't even on the, the there's the shrink wrap on the, on the mm -hmm. edge of it. And so when you have the shrink wrap, you take that off and then the, there's no warning label at all. And there was just a short warning label on the shrink wrap. I couldn't believe it. So I don't, I don't know. But when you, so when, um, now I've, I've read your book and Darcy's obviously read your book, but a lot of people out there haven't. What's the main um, kind of takeaway uh, uh, with cigarettes versus, versus smokeless tobacco? The main takeaway is when, you, when, you're, when you're smoking, mm -hmm. you're burning tobacco and creating 6,000 chemicals. Those are the, the ones that over a career of smoking mm -hmm. are beaten away at your body. It right. takes time, it takes a couple decades, mm -hmm. but you're still doing yourself a lot of damage if you're burning tobacco and inhaling smoke. Right. Name me something, anything that you burn that you don't create a lot of garbage. Right. Okay? okay. With smokeless tobacco, with dip and chew products, mm -hmm. there's no burning. Right. So they're vastly safer right. from the get-go. And that was going to bring me to my next point. So there's, have you heard of, I'm sure you've heard of it, but with, with Swedish schnooze and stuff, they use a method called pasteurization. Yeah. And then with American tobacco, they use fermentation, I believe. Yes. And so now with fermentation, it's kind of smoking the, 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 the to age the, the tobacco leaves rather than, I guess, what would be called steaming with pasteurization almost. Mm -hmm. And they say that pasteurization in Swedish snus is, you, you know, a little bit healthier because it's, they, they're not really burning it, but I guess you're not really burning it with fermentation either. Have you done any research on that? And like, Absolutely. Mm -hmm. the, the Swedish products have lower levels of contaminants. Okay. Okay. But the, but the contaminants are, in American products are already so low right. that a minor change in parts per million Right. Contaminants. Yeah. Okay. When you when you translate it to people using them, right. you don't see any differences. Yeah. So the epidemiology, which is what we what we rely on for talking about what it actually affects people, right. there's very little difference. Right. Are Swedish products a little bit less, a, a little bit lower in contaminants? Yes. But does it translate to anything that's meaningful right. for dippers and chewers? Yeah. Not really. Yeah. If you like Swedish products, mm -hmm. if you enjoy the flavors, enjoy Swedish products, by all means go ahead. Right. But it's not necessary to switch from Swedish products to a, from American to Swedish products right. to, to uh, have a lot of health benefits. Right, right, right. Now, with uh we were talking about this earlier whenever i showed up but the video that i made was a a article or a list that the american cancer society released i think it was early this year march or something mm -hmm. like that they released it and they gave a list of 17 of the most harmless or the, the uh, of the what what is not the most harmless most uh, harmful the most harmful uh products or not even products because obesity was on there and stuff mm -hmm. like that but smokeless tobacco was not on that list whatsoever and cigarettes was on, on top and then obesity i think was second mm -hmm. and and just small hepatitis was on there and, and, and things like that so that's a huge deal because is that something that the fda is going to look at or, or, or are they still going to continue to do this thing where we're going to put bigger warning labels on, on smokeless tobacco and not cigarettes. Well, for years, the American Cancer Society was in a war on smokeless tobacco. Right. They, they, they spent 
decades trashing smokeless tobacco. Right. It wasn't scientific, mm. but they kept on this, kept up with this crusade to make American smokeless tobacco products evil and dangerous. Right. Just this year, as you said, they basically changed their strategy. So they published this report, 17 external uh, factors that cause cancer, 660,000 cases of cancer in the United States, mm -hmm. and smokeless tobacco isn't on the list. Right. And they went down to some really small yeah, kind of causes right. of cancer. I mean, yeah. we're talking tiny uh, factors that maybe cause a few hundred or a thousand cases. Right. Smokeless tobacco is no longer on their list. Right. Which is a huge step. It's huge. Yeah. I think that, the lowest on the list was 0.1%. Right. It's the same. So yeah. dip and chew are no longer on the American Cancer Society's radar right. with respect to causing cancer. That's an admission. It's a backdoor admission, but mm -hmm. it's still an important step where we're starting to get turnaround on whether these can, whether these products cause cancer. Right. Okay. So you you've been doing work on this probably longer than anybody, and you've been and you've been you know working tediously on this stuff. But in your whole line of work, have you ever found? Um, uh, areas where people have gotten cancer or oral uh, uh, gum disease or, or something like that from smokeless tobacco are there any is there any proof to that outside um, that a lot of people because you, you don't really hear about you hear people dying of smoking all the time mm -hmm. but you never really there's not there, you don't really have people that are uh, uh, you know um, that are uh, that talk about you know smokeless tobacco cancer all the time and you and you hear about it with baseball players. I know you're sitting over there doing doing baseball, and you heard about it with Tony Gwynn. Yep. With, I, I believe with salivary gland cancer, in which actually I've done some research, and salivary gland cancer is actually most uh, prominent with with smokers, rather than rather than uh, smokeless tobacco users. Well, actually, with respect to Tony Gwynn's cancer, mm -hmm. it was a tragedy that Tony Gwynn died right. of that salivary gland cancer. Yeah. But your viewers need to know that salivary gland cancer is so rare mm -hmm. that it's hard to tell exactly what's causing it. Right. And tobacco products have never been implicated as a huge cause of any salivary, salivary gland cancer. Right. So for, you know, Tony Gwynn believed that his dipping caused his salivary gland right. cancer. But there's no scientific evidence right. for it. Yeah, and then his family decided to aggressively sue the makers of dip products. Right, they settled. It's yeah. all gone. It's history now. Mm -hmm. But there was never any scientific credibility for for blaming dip and chew products. Right. It's probably a really hard thing to even find out what you know. Oh, what, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, sometimes only the big guy knows. Yeah, right. And, and so. And so when you when you talk about uh, um, you know it's it's hard to kind of find it. You don't really know where you know the cancer's coming from, stuff like that. When you, and then you start talking about uh, products that are are even safer and other stuff. Obviously, with with cigarettes, you you know people are doing the jewel now, and people are, are are switching to vaping and stuff like that. And I've been doing some some vape videos recently, and people are it's just insane it's taken over everything mm -hmm. now have you been doing any studies on on vaporizing and like is it you know because a lot of people are like oh well you know you're getting water vapor in your lungs and and all this kind of stuff and you know it's this is stuff that everybody always talks about like oh by the way we should talk about this really quick is there fiberglass and dip because everybody was always talking about fiberglass and dip it has to cut your lip to get your bloodstream i can t tell you unequivocally uh -huh that there is no fiberglass <laughs> added to dip products, okay, good. period, good. okay? I there is no you. question that there is nothing like that. Yeah. Now, tobacco leaves, okay, just like any other natural product, mm -hmm. okay, and we've certainly been uh, talking about lettuce leaves recently, yeah. right? Oh, yeah, that old Okay, rolling. they have, every, every natural food product mm -hmm. has contaminants in it. Okay, spinach has micro 
uh, levels of, of sand or other products. Mm -hmm. Every product does, right. okay? But they don't need, dip and chew products don't need to have fiberglass so that you can enjoy the effects of nicotine. Right. That's just a, an urban myth mm -hmm. for which there is zero evidence. Right. And, now, and speaking of nicotine, before I get into the vapor stuff, which I do want to get into, but nicotine, a lot of people are think that when you're talking about nicotine and, oh, there's nicotine and tobacco, that's the addicting thing, obviously. But is nicotine bad for you? Is nicotine something that is going to make you sick? Is nicotine something that you need to worry about and you need to think about not quitting because or uh, quitting? Because I've had some doctors tell me that they prescri they'll prescribe people on nicotine gum for the rest of their life. Mm -hmm. It's it's just not something that uh, you know. It's just like well, at least as long as they're not having the, the tobacco or whatever that's you know and, and smoking it and all the carcinogens and everything that come with that, they're fine. Nicotine gum forever, that's fine. Do you agree with that? And you know. This is one of the first things I asked myself when I started doing research on these products 24 years ago. What's going on with nicotine? Right. And the answer I got then that's still valid now is that, you know, nicotine is not a health food. Right. But nicotine is about as dangerous as caffeine. Right. And, you know, I enjoy coffee. Mm -hmm. I live for coffee. Yeah. I roast my own beans. Mm -hmm. I really enjoy coffee. Right. But I know that caffeine is not a dangerous drug. Right. Okay? And so what dippers and chewers need to know, too, mm -hmm. is that nicotine is no more dangerous than caffeine. Gotcha. It's a relatively safe drug to use from a consumer standpoint. Right. You can enjoy nicotine. Right. And in fact, many Americans, millions of Americans, consume nicotine just as safely as they consume caffeine if they don't burn tobacco right. first and inhale the smoke. Exactly. That's the key here. What's that your, people don't realize. Right. What's your opinion on, we were talking about this the other day, about I, I found an ad, uh, I don't even remember, it was, a, it was a cigarette company a long, long time ago, but it was an ad of a girl who was sick sitting on a doctor's table, and the doctor is giving a thumbs up while she's smoking a cigarette, <laughs> trying to make herself feel better from way back in the day where they're prescribing cigarettes and, and stuff like this. What's your opinion on that? And Was it just like no studies were done? And it was like, I just, I just don't get, because I remember you see it in movies and stuff, and they're just like, you know, everybody, sm I mean, back in the 70s and stuff, everybody smoked. But like, what, what was it where they were prescribing cigarettes? And like, I just, I don't get it. Well, I don't get it either. Mm. Because back in the 1960s, my grandfather smoked. Mm -hmm. And my great-grandfather who was a smokeless tobacco user for his entire 98 years mm -hmm. on this planet, told my grandfather in the 1960s, Worthy, don't use those cancer sticks. Right. So everybody who was, had a brain knew that smoking wasn't good right. way back. Mm -hmm. Okay? But this whole concept that all tobacco products are equally dangerous mm -hmm. and equally evil right. is a more recent concept, yeah. and it is flat out wrong. Now, 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 tobacco's not, you know, tobacco's not a health food. Right. And I, I, I'm not giving, uh, you know, it's not a cancer prevention agent. Right, right, right. But as far as whether or not tobacco is safe, or not safe, mm -hmm. it's how you use it. Right. And if you burn it, it ain't good. Right. Now, uh, speaking of the burning and everything, well, before I get into the, the vaping thing, is a whole big thing, but what's the, what is all of the chemicals and, and, and things in cigarettes? Why are they in there? Is it to preserve it? Is it to, like, like, why are they in there? Is it to be more addicting? Is it, like, I know there's so many, there's hundreds. But why is why are they in there? 
in the first place because well, you you feel you i mean as a consumer i guess you'd be like well all you got to do is just cut the tobacco and 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 roll it up in a little cigarette and then sell it you know but there's all these different things that come along with it and it's not just stuff that's coming from the plan i feel like i feel like they're putting stuff in they're spraying the tobacco down with different things and they're adding more to it than what's just actually on the plant you know, that's another kind of myth mm -hmm. that the tobacco companies are doctoring tobacco right. to make it more addictive or more dangerous mm -hmm. or whatever. Right. Let me tell you a secret. <laughs> okay? Columbus mm -hmm. discovered tobacco 500 years ago. Mm -hmm. He came from Italy to what is now the new, what was then the new world. Mm -hmm. And he discovered natives using tobacco in 1492. Right. Prior to that, nobody outside the new world had ever used tobacco, mm -hmm. okay? And, and they, the natives were chewing it, dipping it, smoking it ceremonially, they were using it in all the ways that we use tobacco now. Right. But n he basically discovered it, okay? Mm -hmm. There were no transnational tobacco companies in yeah. 1492. Yeah. And yet, it is so much humans love tobacco. Right. And within a hundred years of Columbus discovering America, mm -hmm. Tobacco, by the, by the early 16th century, okay, by the early 1600s, mm -hmm. excuse me, right. tobacco was being used by every culture in the world wow. within a hundred years. Yeah. Everybody everywhere was enjoying tobacco. In many different ways. All, in all ways. Yeah. So Columbus discovered it for the rest of humanity. Right. And within a hundred years with primitive transportation, primitive uh, transportation of tobacco, mm -hmm. it was being used everywhere. Right. It's people, humans love tobacco yeah. because it, it is an enjoyable product. Right. Are we going to eradicate that? Yeah. by government regulation, legislation, or anything else? Mm. Absolutely not. Right. We are never going to eradicate human consumption of an enjoyable product. Right. So with vaping now, you've got this huge influx of people now buying jewels, which Juul just, you know, went undergo a bunch of stuff with the FDA about their flavors and all that stuff. You've got nicotine salts, you've got e-liquids, you've got Juuls, you've got all that type of stuff. What's the, what is the, um, and, and, and so now my question for you was, everybody's talking about is vaping good for you? Because, you know, everybody's trying to, and I know a lot of people have switched off of cigarettes, getting onto the Juuls and stuff like that, because they are having a huge nicotine level spike. You know, the Juul, I know they have, they have 50 milligram of, of nicotine pods and stuff that you can mm -hmm. get. I mean, you're get, you're ingesting a lot of nicotine at once mm -hmm. and it's satisfying their craving rather than cigarettes. Yep. So a lot of people are going on about, you know, what is, what is vaping doing to your lungs? Are you getting water vapor in your lungs? Is it going to be bad? Are you going to drown yourself? They're saying and stuff like that. Have you done any research on that? And what, what have you found in, in the whole new vaping? So let's compare smoke mm -hmm. and vape. Okay. Okay. Smoke contains nicotine and 6,000 other chemicals right. that aren't good for you. Yeah. Vapor contains nicotine mm -hmm. and a few other chemicals mm -hmm. that perhaps aren't that good, right. but aren't that bad, like water, mm -hmm. propylene glycol, vegetable glycerin, mm -hmm. okay, right. and a, some contaminants because the, it's a tobacco product. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be perfectly healthy, right. but it's still is vastly safer than smoke. Right. So are we, do we encourage 
smokers to switch? Absolutely. Right. And it's not just me. It's organizations like the Royal College of Physicians mm -hmm. in England. Mm -hmm. It's Public Health England. Uh, it's a lot of organizations mm -hmm. that are encouraging smokers to quit, and if they can't quit, to switch right. to vastly safer alternatives. Right. Now, what do you? What's your opinion on what the FDA just did to Juul now about the flavor ban? I guess you can say about not selling it in stores anymore, but having to move it there to their website. But they're allowed to sell the mint, the menthol, the the tobacco flavor stuff like that. But they they don't want to, uh, you know, uh, spread their attention to minors, so they got to take their all their you know flavorful creme brulees and stuff like that out of their stores. What's your? And I, I and you gave me a good point when we were in your office earlier on on you know smokeless tobacco flavors and stuff like that but what's the what's your what's your kind of opinion on what they just did with Jewel? well look okay let me be very clear no one wants underage kids to use any tobacco product or use any other drug that they shouldn't be using right period mm -hmm. nobody wants kids to use these products right but the only reason that kids are using a tobacco product is because it has a good flavor? Mm -hmm. I think not. Yeah. This is nonsense, right. okay? So it's one thing to oppose children's use. Mm -hmm. It's another thing to claim that the only reason kids are using products is because they're flavored. So finishing off on vape. With, you know, everybody quitting cigarettes and stuff like that because of vape. Are, do, do you know if there is, if the numbers of smoking are down because of vape? Oh, there's no question about it. Yeah. There's no question that the numbers of smokers are down. And they're going down at unprecedented rates. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're not talking about just a slow decline like it was. We're seeing a drop off. Yeah. And we're also seeing, and the, the, the feds collect information on this, we're seeing really impressive con uh, a decline in consumption of cigarettes. So the cigarette stick count, mm -hmm. they're, they're dropping unbelievably. Wow. And, you know, there's that new product, Icos, Icos from PMI. That? It's heat, not burn. Uh -huh. um, basically, they take a, a stick that looks like a cigarette. Uh -huh. They put a heating element in oh, it. Oh, okay. I saw yeah. that. I see and that. and the va a vapor comes off. Mm -hmm. That has decimated cigarette consumption in Japan. Wow. And we're waiting on that to be released here. Uh -huh. The FDA is sitting on it again. Right. So we're, we're, we, we don't have that on the market yet here. These products are going to destroy cigarettes. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's insane how many different types of things you can get and it's everybody exactly i did i got into the whole vaping thing i did one video on it and i got made fun of because i didn't know nothing about it <laughs> i just i just kept doing it i couldn't believe all the different things with it mm -hmm. but not only that um with you know talking about the fda what's your thoughts on the fda as you being you know kind of you know the doctor and, and doing studies and stuff like that What's your thoughts on them? Because I, I feel like a lot of times the FDA comes out with stuff like the warning labels on, on dipping tobacco, and there's not even a big yeah. warning label on cigarettes. Like, what, yeah. you know, that, I see, feel like yeah. they, they, they mess up on a lot of things. And maybe it's on purpose sometimes because they're trying to help people out. You know, that's always a conspiracy out there. But what's your kind of final thoughts on them? If you, I mean, you don't have to. It well, is the FDA, so you don't have to comment if you don't want to. Well, I think the FDA has moved slowly on vastly safer products. Mm -hmm. The whole federal government has been reluctant to acknowledge that anything that's smoke-free mm -hmm. is also much less harmful. The right. federal government has never acknowledged that. Mm -hmm. For vapor products, for smokeless tobacco, like mm -hmm. dip and chew products. Right. And what they're doing is they are harming cigarette smokers because they're sending the message that smokers might, might as well not switch to anything else. Right. They have to quit everything altogether. Yeah. That's harmful. Now, we are talking about dippers earlier. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you guys can appreciate this. About 40% of dippers mm -hmm. also smoke. Really? 
Absolutely. Wow, I did it's not It's very that. common for dippers to also smoke. Right. They do it according to context. Uh-huh. Yeah, you know, if you're out at a bar, you might have a cigarette. If you're right. if you're hunting or fishing or whatever, you might do dip. Yeah. But they they mix it. Well, for those dual users, mm-hmm. it is a crime for the federal government not to be acknowledging that dip is vastly safer because other smokers would be switching. Right. You know, when I did that interview with Darcy. Mm-hmm. There were so many comments that they hadn't known that. Right. And it's being kept from them by the government. Yeah. And it's criminal because otherwise we would have folks switching and leading longer and healthier lives. Right. Now, that brings me to a very interesting thing that you told me whenever I showed up today. And that has to do with the FDA. And that is that the company Copenhagen is meeting with the FDA for probably the first time in a long time to, well, how about you go ahead and explain it? Well, several companies have filed to the FDA to allow them to market their products Mm -hmm. as safer alternatives to cigarettes. Right. First company that did that was Swedish Match mm-hmm. with their General Snus. Yeah, Swedish Match is General. They do a lot of snus. They're they're over in Sweden, I believe. Yep. And then they have you know some stuff here as well. Exactly. Uh, you see it at all your gas stations and stuff like that with General Snus. You see it in the little fridge and stuff. So Swedish Snus, I think, is probably the number one biggest tobacco company in, in the Sweden. World. Yeah, in, in Sweden, Sweden for yeah. sure. Yeah. Number two uh, was that heat not burn product. Mm-hmm. They filed with the FDA. Okay. Number three was Camel Snus from Reynolds. They right. filed to the FDA to allow them to tell smokers they're they're safer. Right. And then finally, Altria, mm-hmm. the U.S. smokeless tobacco company, has Copenhagen filed Skull. to have Copenhagen fine cut seen by consumers as less dangerous than cigarettes for lung cancer. Now, nobody's ever accused DIP of causing lung lung cancer, cancer, right? but they did this, I believe, so that they could force the FDA to make a decision about something that everybody else in the United States already knows, right? okay? And it's it's that DIP doesn't cause lung cancer and is safer. Right. So it's, like a, it's a little step in the right direction. Exactly. They're trying to get the FDA to take baby steps toward right. acknowledging now, safer. The products. funny thing is, you said Copenhagen snuff, fine cut, yeah. filed. So it's not every single Copenhagen. So it's like you know, are, are you not allowed to just do the whole thing? You have no. to do it one at a time. Oh, well, you've got to do it one at a time. And if you get, if you're successful, then the FDA is going to make you go back and do other products. That's insane. And so, well, how long did it take for the, the Swedish Match to get back? They, it, how long did it take for the FDA to get back to Swedish Match? After well, they had their- Swedish Match's application's been out for four years mm-hmm. now and still going. That's insane. so. That's another problem that I have is the FDA just isn't moving quickly. Now, they, they say they're moving quickly with respect to decreasing nicotine in cigarettes. Mm-hmm. You know, they've got all kinds of ideas about how they're going to beat on tobacco. Mm-hmm. But as far as safer tobacco products, something that would help smokers today, mm-hmm. they're, they're, they're not moving so fast. Right. Now, a meeting is scheduled mm-hmm. in Silver Springs, Maryland, uh, at FDA mm-hmm. for the Copenhagen project, uh, right. the, the, the Copenhagen application. Right. That's February 6th next February year. February 6th next year, 2019. Now, is it open to the public? Yes. So it's open to the public, and they're going to have a webcast, which is yes. going to show it. So, you know, I think maybe we'll try to maybe stream that on the channel or something like that and see what happens because it's very interesting. I just want to see that's something that everybody always has conspiracies about. It's like, what does the FDA really think of, you know, this, that, and the other, and stuff like that? So it's like we, uh, we, um, go ahead. But Dr. Radu, the FDA is not dragging their feet when it comes to banning flavored vape and jewel products. What is the deal here? Yeah. Yeah, well, <clears throat> it's always difficult if you bring up children. Yeah. yeah. It's always really a struggle for everybody. Um, and they are moving very quickly to try to solve that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the thing is, in the long history of the United States, 
Uh, kids want to do what adults do. Yeah. And I'm not familiar with any example of where the government has come in and stopped children from doing anything that mm -hmm. adults do. Right. And so I think this is another example of that. Right. Uh, and and you brought up a good point too with the jewel thing, with the with the flavors and stuff like that. It's like who? It's like you're going to have flavors. You you yeah. gave me the point of like, well, everybody likes to drink a little bit and stuff like that. But if you give them pure alcohol, nobody's not going to really like that. They like it to be flavored in certain ways and stuff with your bourbons and, and so, whiskeys and stuff so, like that. So the federal government should be requiring alcohol manufacturers to take out the flavors. Right. No beer flavor, no wine flavor, yeah. no mixed drink flavors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I don't understand the disconnect here right. between vape flavors. Mm -hmm. And like we talked about, there's no question that vaping is vastly safer than smoking. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to accept any youth use of any illegal product. Right, yeah. But <laughs> at least they're not smoking. And in yeah. fact, as vaping's increased among kids, mm -hmm. The smoking rate has continued to decline again at an unprecedented rate. Right. So they're not smoking, yeah. and um, I think I think we have to look at the bright side as right. well. Yeah, for sure. Well, like we said again, it was February sixth, right? February sixth is the Silver Springs, meeting. Maryland, and it's That's on the web. We can yep. get you a link if you want to. Yep. And then if you guys uh, want, just comment below, and maybe we'll go to Maryland. We'll do a protest. There you go. Say, Smokeless tobacco saves lives. We'll we'll hold up some sides and stuff like that. You guys, let me know in the comments if you want to do a meetup, and we'll do that. That'd, <laughs> that'd be pretty funny for a video. But and then we, like I said, it'll be available. On hey, board, maybe so. I can meet you there. Yeah. Maybe uh, we'll uh, we'll get Dr. Radu down there. Oh no, yeah. not you. I have a question. Oh, okay, what? Well. <laughs> Can I ask? Yeah, sure. So, Dr. Radu, as as Outlaw mentioned, you have and I have done some videos in the past regarding this subject, and a lot of people I've noticed commented on some of those videos that you are one doctor. What about the rest <laughs> of the doctors? Where's their opinion on this subject? Why do they all say? that smokeless tobacco products are so harmful, but yet here you are saying that, hey, they're really not. Well, I said it first 24 years ago, but now there's a growing consensus that if you don't burn a tobacco product, you can use it in a fairly safe manner. So there is a growing consensus among health authorities and among health professionals that we need to apply harm reduction, that is safer products, and get smokers to switch to them. It's growing. Yeah. And, I've uh, seen that too online. I've seen that. What, what's the, do you know numbers of, of amount of people that smoke in the U.S.? And then even smokeless tobacco Just well? shy of 40 million, 40 million uh, smoke? smokers still. Yeah. And that's, the only, and that's only the number that admit that they're smoking. Right. You know, the federal surveys have gotten to the point where people are reluctant to tell the truth. Mm -hmm. And so we see people under-reporting mm -hmm. smoking numbers. Right. But there's still slightly fewer than uh, 40 million, and we still have close to a half million deaths every year. Right. So yeah. this problem ain't solved. Yeah, man. for we, sure. We've got what about smokers tobacco? Do you, you know those numbers on how many people? You know, somewhere, depending on the survey, somewhere around 5 to 10 million gotcha. probably use yeah, smokers. Gotcha. And you know what? As we said before, mm -hmm. you can hardly count a death. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can't even find right. deaths related to smokeless tobacco. Yeah. And I mentioned mouth cancer, other cancers, mm -hmm. heart disease, strokes, emphysema. Of course, nobody that uses DIP is going to have an emphysema yeah. problem. Right. Uh, it's hard to pin smokeless tobacco use for any disease right any disease and now most of the people that smoke too when they get cancer and stuff a lot of the times it's mouth cancer oh with, absolutely with smoking. a lot absolutely. of people think that like oh you're going to get mouth cancer and they're and they're telling me and they're and they're and they're, and they're smoking a pack of cigarettes a day i'm like dude who do you think is going to get mouth cancer first buddy so yeah it's it's, it's oh, crazy. in but, my practice i that's Mainly, all I saw mm -hmm. were smoking-related mouth and throat cancers. Right. No question about that. What's the is it, is it, is lung cancer the the number one with with smoking? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Number but remember, one. dip doesn't cause lung cancer. <laughs> so 
<laughs> that, that we is, hope the FDA makes the right decision yeah, in February. I don't, but even if they do, like, oh yeah, so that was my question too. So even if they do make a decision, okay, yeah, you can promote it with, with that. Let's say they say it this, oh yeah, start tomorrow. You can go and, and promote it with that. Is it just on the Copenhagen snuff that they can, they can promote it on the can, but they still have to have the warning label, I'm guessing? They'll probably put, no, the warning labels won't change. Mm -hmm. They'll have to probably have an insert or some extra communication. Right. They won't be able to fit it on the can with yeah. the big warning labels. Right. Yeah. Uh, remember, it was Copenhagen fine cut. Yeah. Not even long cut <laughs> or any of the other cut. stuff they do. So, but we're, hope, we're hopeful it's going gonna, it's gonna to pass. Yeah, for sure. Well, as far as the uh, mouth cancer from smokers, that's uh, you mentioned in your book, though, that was because that the smoke perme permeates the membranes everywhere. in the mouth and throat. Exactly. And that's where, where the problem is. Absolutely. It, 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 smoke and the chemicals go everywhere in the body. So smokers have higher rates of bladder cancer, uh, lung, throat, mouth. Uh, it goes on and on because the smoke really penetrates and gets distributed throughout the body. Right. Smokeless tobacco? Yeah. It's just totally different. What do you think about gutting smokeless tobacco? Is that a bad thing to do? You know, the Swedes uh, put their dip in and never spit. Mm -hmm. So they're basically getting some of that juice and swallowing it. I right. mean, they have to be. Right, yeah. Um, and that's where the whole pasteurization thing everybody was talking about. Yeah. Well, that's why you, you, you can swallow snooze. I'm like, well, it can't be that different. No, it's not. And I, I think it's probably best if you don't mm -hmm. uh, gut the juice. Right. But, but, you know, on the other hand, there's lots of people that do it. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, you know, they don't seem I – don't, I don't, I'm not aware of any problems yeah. with health right. related gotcha. to that. So you have a lot of stuff online. I mean, you have a lot of interviews. You have, you know, why not your website? You write a lot of blogs. I see you get some, the book out and stuff like that. Where can people find, or what do you want to promote? Just go ahead and, and promote everything. Because I, I know people are going to be super interested in this, and they're going to follow you, and they're going to keep the update and stuff, and maybe even February, maybe seeing you out there in Maryland or something yeah, like that. Yeah, well, so. well, one thing I'd like to tell people to do is go to Rodu, R-O-D-U, Tobacco Truth. That's one word. Yeah. And that gets you to my blog. And from my blog, if you've got a question, you can just plug your question into the search engine and you can get blogs. I've done, I think, about 500 blog posts now myself. Wow. Wow. And you can get all kinds of valuable information from that blog. That's the best resource I can give you. Okay. Obviously, I'd love you to take a look at and even buy for smokers only yeah how smokeless tobacco can save your life great book i've read it darcy's read it still for sale on amazon oh, nice. they're they're still selling it they basically print to order now oh, okay cool. uh, the new version which also includes a chapter on e-cigarettes um, you know any chapter on e-cigarettes is automatically out of date because right. things move so fast yeah right. but still you can get the basic background from for smokers only you can show your relatives or friends that mm. think you're crazy yeah. <laughs> you can show them and uh, get uh, start the education process you know it's dippers I believe dippers need to engage mm. and start being proud of what they're doing right. and start educating people about uh, this this whole concept yeah. that they're not hurting themselves. Right, and that's why we're making this video now, too. Exactly. I think people need to be a little bit more proactive on this yes. if, uh, if, um, if you really do you know, love tobacco and everything like that with everybody kind of just talking trash on what is it true and you know there's facts to to back that stuff up so and then you also have a twitter what's your twitter at at brad radu at brad radu you're, you're good on there i follow you on there and uh any other plans to, to no we're just going to keep taking this uh, yeah. out there and trying to get it circulated yeah. we're our goal is to help smokers have some other options besides quitting altogether which right. doesn't work for hardly anybody yeah well go to outlawdip.com there you go. <laughs> well, I appreciate it, Dr. Oh, that was, was a great. It was I think, a pleasure. I think a lot of people learned a lot. I definitely learned a lot today. So, and then maybe uh, when Maryland comes around, when the whole thing, maybe we can do yeah. another one. Absolutely. So, appreciate it, guys. Thanks for watching. Leave a comment below if you guys got any questions too, and uh, we'll try to get to them. Thanks, y'all.